In this video, we're going to be taking another look at some of the latest and greatest in the way of Fallout 4 mod releases. And included on this list is one particularly special mod that I think some of you will either adore and absolutely want to play immediately, or others will hate and probably never want to experience in-game. Probably going to be a polarizing one, but I think it's pretty cool. If you guys enjoy the Fallout 4 modded content, I should have a lot more on the way. I have a few special videos in this category planned over the next month or so, and there's just been overall a ton of great mods coming out. So much so that I actually have kind of an overflow video coming in the next few days with mods that I couldn't fit in this one. And also, if you guys missed my last video, I cover a particularly special mod that does add in Karma as well as a ton of subsystems to go along with that into Fallout 4 and is definitely, definitely worth a new playthrough. But otherwise, taking a look first, we do have Children of the... I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce that. At its core, what this will be is a new horror mod for Fallout 4, really fitting in that scary nature. And just to give you a glimpse of what this does, look at this. I was originally playing this mod and recording this footage at nighttime with noise cancelling headphones, and I gotta say, this is one of the scariest Fallout 4 experiences I've had almost ever, but definitely in a long time. Only Grim has really gotten me to this amount of fear in game. I may or may not have turned all the lights on in my apartment. So this mod is almost somewhat hard to explain because I don't want to spoil it. If you're somebody that's interested in this, I want you to experience it and the novelty of some of the surprises that come with it for yourself. But at a broad level, what this is is a new quest slash dungeon mod that will give you a totally new experience in Fallout 4. But one of the particularly cool aspects of it, and I think what makes it a lot more interesting than just another horror dungeon mod, is it actually is lore friendly as this mod does have heavy Lovecraftian undertones, and in fact is actually building off of the Dunwick Borer's story in Fallout 4, and really the Dunwick Corporation overall. If you're not familiar, I actually made a video on this a couple of years ago, it is one of the scariest vanilla locations in game, and this is one of those mods that will add in something similar to Dunwick Borer's, but a lot scarier with a lot more custom content, and what will actually really set this one over the top is it also comes with totally custom sound effects and music notes at points. As you explore this dungeon, it does provide a few hours of new content. Through that, you're going to find some new enemy types, but also a lot in the way of new stories. Very similar to the original Dunwick Borers, you'll find notes or terminal entries providing some backstory of something strange or mysterious going on. And of course, as you experience this, you will start to see some of that. It really is a grade A experience if you're into scary mods for Fallout 4. I would argue this is a must download. And again, it really does a good job at feeling natural. It feels like something that could have always been there, except it's actually higher quality than most vanilla locations. But again, as far as those new creatures, what you might find at the end of the tunnel, or even the underlying story, I don't want to spoil it. The fun of this one is actually discovering all of that for yourself. Although, definitely bring a flashlight. But even further, this mod will leave you with a few toys that you can play with even after it is over. It does a good job of not only giving you this new dungeon, but also integrating some of that content into the broader commonwealth. But with that in mind, you probably want some new toys to actually explore this dungeon with. That, of course, in the form of totally new weapons. 
And when it comes to that, we actually have a few new options all coming from Nova, who has in fact been an absolute tear as of late, just releasing tons of content for Fallout 4, almost an unimaginable amount of content. Just in 2020, he's already released five weapon mods. But one of his new ones that I do want to show off is the iconic Desert Eagle, along with its iconic ammo type of the 50 Action Express. So we pretty much all have actually played with this in Call of Duty, and in Fallout 4, it is a fairly faithful recreation. You'll have the various customization options, whether it be different attachments, you could kind of turn this into a tactical weapon if you want to, or if you just want something simpler like a silver or even gold desert eagle that is available also. And although there are a wide variety of customization options and even a few unique variants scattered throughout the Commonwealth, this mod is simply fun to use. It really knows its identity as a over-the-top, high-powered handgun, and it definitely recreates that well in Fallout 4. The sounds and animations make it feel very tight, but also give it that powerful feel. You definitely feel like you're firing something big and probably unnecessary. But of course, the Desert Eagle is a sidearm, so if you need a new primary, also from Nova, we do have the AUG A3. This one's also pretty special, as it has quite a bit in the way of customization options. Unlike the Desert Eagle, with the AUG, you could really take it from more of a close-ranged weapon to a carbine to even an LMG or sniper rifle. There are a variety of different barrel types and other accessories that you can attach to this to give them distinctively different feels in-game. And similar to all of Nova's other mods, you also can change the ammo type with this one, which of course does have a visual representation if you're using the smaller 10mm round or the 5.56 round that is typical for this. And this is another one that's going to have its own custom variants scattered throughout the Commonwealth that you can find and pick up on, some of these having some interesting twists to them, but definitely enjoyable nonetheless. And overall, I would say using those first three mods together is actually a lot of fun. Equipping the flashlights on those two weapons and then just going through that dungeon is scary as it will be. And with all Nova's weapons, I really like them because they do everything basically perfect. Neither the AUG or the Desert Eagle really push things forward per se, but he's releasing quality content that does everything you would hope for. It has all the customization options you would want, it has those unique variants throughout the Commonwealth, and it's widening our pool of potential weapon mods that are high quality and fun to use in game. And I'm sure for many of you, you're just downloading every new weapon mod to come out, so these are just a couple of cool new ones that will definitely make Fallout 4 a bit more fun. But let's say you don't like combat and you just want to spice up Fallout 4 in other ways, well for you, we have the Pip-Boy 2000 Mark V. What this will do is have a very faithful recreation of the Pip-Boy from Fallout 76, but now it's in Fallout 4. This is actually a pretty cool mod to begin with. Of course, at its core, it's going to be a new Pip-Boy, and that's not something to shy away from or just to write off. You look at your Pip-Boy a lot, and when you have a nice piece of custom content that is high quality like this one, over time, you'll really start to appreciate it. I personally haven't used the vanilla Pip-Boy in literally years, outside of the occasional video where I forget to install a Pip-Boy mod. And although this is cool, one of the other pretty interesting aspects of this mod is it comes built in with several Pip-Boy customization options. So there are a wide variety of different textures you can apply to this, each of which coming with its own set of requirements. Some, it's just a matter of hitting a certain level and you'll unlock some new skins, but other ones are actually faction specific, such as completing a certain milestone with a certain faction, which is pretty cool. I know the Pip-Boy paints probably sound simple, several of these are pretty high quality and different, and actually do really change up the look and feel of your Pip-Boy. But speaking of which, if you want to change up the look and feel even a bit further, another cool mod to add on with this is Pip-Boy Dual Colors. This makes it so now with your Pip-Boy, it's one, going to be colorful, but even further, you could use any color in the RGB spectrum. There are a few easy presets that do come with this mod, so you can just attach those, or if you want something totally custom, you can do that. This is another one that feels cool or special for the same reasons as the other Pip-Boy mod. You spend so much time looking at this little screen on this little device that sometimes making it feel just a little bit more custom is special and does pay dividends across an entire playthrough. But speaking of things that will pay dividends, last but not least, we do have the Accuracy International AX-50 Anti-Material Rifle. What this will do is add in a new high quality weapon mod into Fallout 4, and in particular I like this one because it fleshes out the category of high end bolt action sniper rifles, something that we really don't have a ton of in Fallout 4 by default. 
This was specifically designed as a late game weapon, and the damage as well as some of the customization options are definitely reflective of that. It is a tank killer of sorts, which is really handy to have in Fallout 4, and I think large in part otherwise lacking outside of good legendaries. Outside of that, I just think it looks awesome. There are a wide variety of customization options, most of what you'd think, a few different paint jobs, barrels, and a ton of scopes for you to choose from. The sounds on this one aren't my favorite, but it's something that's pretty easy to get over or get used to over time. As well as one of the cool aspects is it actually features several ammo types. And these are things that actually have some true balancing around them. It has the typical just high explosive rounds or incendiary rounds, but also things like armor piercing or long range sniper rounds that do have genuine pros or cons depending on how you're using this or in which situation you're using this. Overall, it's a really cool looking and well done weapon mod for Fallout 4, but otherwise that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Just a disclaimer for the channel, for those of you that do watch every video to the end later this week, you're gonna see some pre-recorded but otherwise interesting content as I am going to PAX East from Thursday to Sunday. Pretty excited about this. I get to play Fallout 76 Wastelanders DLC early, but also PAX East taking place in Boston happens to be the location of one of our favorite Fallout games. So who knows, maybe there'll be a special piece of content around that fact also. Either way, as always, again, I thank you all for watching and for the support, but until next time, I hope to see you all later.